This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aterra's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro, and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aterra. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with a little celebration from EV startup and sibling brand to Volvo, Polestar, which just celebrated making its 150,000th Polestar 2 EV. Now in its third year of production, the Polestar 2 is taking a leaf out of Tesla's book, benefiting from regular over-the-air software updates designed to improve both in-car tech and driving capabilities. And this year's model gets a new 82 kilowatt hour battery pack that improves both range and charging speed. In celebrating the milestone, Polestar says the UK is one of its fastest growing markets, with more than 20,000 Polestar 2 now registered on the roads. Registrations are up 174% year on year. That's quite appropriate since a friend of mine in the UK just purchased one as their first EV this week. In the pickup truck world, special edition trucks are something of a long-standing tradition, with everything from Harley Davidson to camping fans getting their own special versions of regular pickups. Now electric pickups are getting in on the act too, with Ford launching its first ever special edition variant of the F-150 Lightning, the F-150 Lightning Platinum Black Edition. Essentially a range-topping F-150 Lightning Platinum with all black accents and trim, including smoked out lights and a special matte black wrap, only 2,000 models will be made and the starting price is an eye-watering US dollars. That's nearly $7,000 more than the starting price of the high-end platinum trim variant it's based on. I just don't get it. International rental car specialist Hertz has been dramatically expanding its EV offerings of late as it transitions its fleet away from fossil fuels. Currently, its EV fleet has predominantly been made up of Tesla Model 3s, Model Ys and Polestar 2s. But this week, the company confirmed that it will be expanding its fleet to include Cadillac Lyric and Chevrolet Silverado EVs to its fleet very soon. It's all part of a massive 175,000 vehicle purchase agreement it inked with General Motors through until 2027. And while there is no firm date on when these new models will start entering the fleet, I love the idea that renting an EV pickup is going to be a thing, since it allows people who don't need a pickup every day the ability to rent an electric one when they do. When automakers announced they were going to be adopting Tesla's charging inlet in the US, otherwise known as NEX, we here at the channel had plenty of questions. One of them revolved around the use of third-party adapters at public charging stations, allowing CCS cars to use NEX charging stations and vice versa. This week, we got the first clarity on that situation, courtesy of Tom Malogny's State of Charge YouTube channel. He's confirmed that both Electrify America and EVgo have recently updated their terms of service to specifically prohibit adapters that weren't sold by automakers for use with their vehicles. I think this might mean that those with older EVs are now at the mercy of the automakers who could decide to not bother certifying NAX adapters for older CCS-compatible cars. Watch this space. It's no secret that General Motors has been struggling quite a bit this year with production volumes for its new Ultium battery cells. Underpinning every new electric vehicle from its brands, GM is rushing to build multiple Ultium production facilities in the US, but right now, just one is operational. This week, we learned that one facility suffered a major chemical spill that occurred at the plant last weekend, not only causing a temporary shutdown to production while cleanup occurred, 
but it's now sparked an official investigation from the U.S. Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA for short. Reports at the time of the spill in Warren, Ohio, suggest the spill was a slurry called NMP, which is a strong solvent that the EPA categorizes as potentially posing a risk to human health. Mercedes-Benz has updated both its EQA and EQB electric vehicles for the 2024 model year, with new interior design accents, improved sound system and, most importantly, some improvements to EV functionality. While most of the updates are cosmetic, the new model year on both vehicles comes with an updated driving assistance suite that adds improved cameras for front and rear and better operational handover between semi-autonomous and manual driving. But most importantly for end users is the addition of plug and charge, allowing customers the ability to rock up at a charging station, plug in and walk away just like a Tesla, without having to faff around with smartphone apps or RFID cards. The EQB also gets an optional tow hitch for the very first time. As it edges ever closer to production launch of its Cybertruck, Tesla has teased a new image this week of its first Tesla Cybertruck production candidate. Posted on X by Elon Musk, the image doesn't show much we don't already know, but internal communications leaked this week suggest the company is trying to double down on quality control to ensure everything is as good as possible at launch, something Tesla has struggled with at times in the past. Also this week, it added Cybertruck delivery launch invites to its owner referral program, but hasn't shared a confirmed date on when the event will take place. We know on last week's reporting that the company is now sending healthy numbers of pre-production vehicles to be crash-tested, so I'm guessing deliveries will start at the end of Q3 or the start of Q4. Cruise, General Motors' robo-taxi division, hasn't had a particularly good time of late. As we covered recently, a cruise robo-taxi found itself stuck in wet concrete not so long ago after driving down a closed road where roadworks were taking place. And last week, one of its fleet hit a fire truck in San Francisco. As a consequence of that recent accident, the California Department of Motor Vehicles has written to Cruise asking it to to reduce the number of robo-taxis in its fleet by 50%. As per an agreement it's come to with the DMV, crews will operate no more than 50 driverless vehicles during the day and 150 driverless vehicles at night until the DMV has concluded its investigation into those recent accidents and incidents involving cruise vehicles. As we've said before on this channel, and we're going to state again later in the show, AI driving is hard. We all know by now that the GMC Hummer EV is one of the largest, most over-the-top electron guzzlers out there on sale today. Models with the largest 24-module battery pack are so large, they aren't required to submit fuel economy figures, but smaller capacity variants are now appearing on the EPA website. Variants with 20-module, 170-kilowatt-hour battery packs both get EPA-approved 314-mile, 505-kilometer range ratings when fitted with 22-inch wheels, but swap those wheels for 18 inches with 33-inch mud terrain tyres and you'll see 298 miles, 479 kilometres with an eye-watering fuel economy equivalent of 50 mpge. That's 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres. It's no secret that the average sticker price paid for new cars has gone up a lot in recent years. This week, a new Kelly Blue Book report confirmed that there's now only one car for sale in the US with a starting price of under $20,000, the Mitsubishi Mirage. And we regularly hear from people who say their only choice is to lease rather than to buy in a market with interest rates that are continuing to soar. This week, though, we did get some interesting news for those looking to get behind the wheel of an EV. Namely that, if you're in the market, it's now possible to lease a Toyota BZ4X electric crossover for less than the cost of a brand new Toyota Camry. 
As is usually the case though, the devil is in the details. You need to live in the right place, have a good credit rating, and be willing to hand your car back at the end of the lease. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a brand new EV or even a used one? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should definitely check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed full of all the information you need to pick a car that's perfect for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can use, charging providers you should use, and of course, how to get clean, green, renewable energy at home. So follow the link below and start that journey today. The Nürburgring Nordschleife in Germany has long been a mecca for enthusiastic petrol heads and automakers looking to push their cars to the absolute limits. And in the EV world, just as in the ICE vehicle world, automakers like to take their most powerful cars to the ring to see if they can set new lap times. In recent years, we've seen a slew of different automakers set production EV times, with Tesla's Model S Plaid fitted with the Track Pack, the most recent champion on track. But last week, supercar company Rimets set a new production record for a production EV, with an Avera obliterating Tesla's latest record by 20 seconds to circumvent the green hell in 7 minutes, 5.298 seconds. The official video from the attempt is on the company's YouTube channel, and it is well worth a watch. And finally, if you've ever read the manual that comes with your car, or you paid attention in your driver's education classes, you'll know that it's generally considered a bad practice to use cruise control on roads with poor traction, such as when there's heavy rain, ice or snow. And that same logic applies to more advanced driver assistant features like lane keep assist or even semi-autonomous features like autopilot. But this week, one Tesla owner found out to their peril what happens when you don't pay attention in class after their Tesla steered itself off the road and into a flooded ditch after it hit a substantial amount of standing water at speed. The driver claims he's going to sue both the local authorities and Tesla for the incident, but frankly, while I'm not a lawyer, I'm doubtful they'll get far. These systems are not a substitute for an inattentive driver and they are not programmed for aquatic activities, no matter how good they might seem. And on that note, we are done for today. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it is high time you switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make that switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin, Kiwi EV Shoebridge on this channel. He's been spending some time with the MG4. I'm kind of jealous. He said it was a really awesome ride. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.